What's up, everybody? I have a little coolant leak out of my Hoosaberg FE 570. It is coming out of a little weep hole on the water pump housing. And I'm going to see if I can get all that fixed up so it doesn't do that anymore. Because um, I'd rather not get stuck overheated somewhere. If it's leaking, that means it's probably got a little piece of dirt in there, like maybe a little bit of sand or something in between the shaft and the seal. So if that is there long enough, that will wear grooves into the shaft itself. And then you'd have to replace the pump shaft also because it'll probably damage the new seal. So I'm hoping that since this just started leaking, maybe my shaft is okay. Um, insert shaft jokes wherever you want here. So I looked at this and I was gonna try to see if I could get the seals out from the outside, which is maybe doable, but I tried to drill through the seal, uh, the steel in the seal itself, and it's really hard, so the drill didn't want to penetrate at all. Um, instead of burning the drill, I'm just gonna pull the whole cover off and do it from the inside. So here's the water pump housing. Uh, there's just a few bolts. Um, before you do that, there is a drain hole right here with a little uh, copper crush washer. Um, so pop that guy, and then you'll have to pop the radiator cap to get it to, um, to flow out. Uh, to, re to relieve the vacuum. You can just gently open the cap and it'll, that way it's not gonna spray super far. You can kind of modulate the flow that way. Um, once that's off, there's a, uh, there's a hose clamp right here on the hose. Um, loosen that guy, push this hose back. It kind of has some room to go. You can push it back a ways, get that off the housing. And then you've got a couple, I'm assuming these are actually designed into it. There's a couple little pry tabs. There's one there. And then there's one underneath on this side and I was able to use some aluminum stock and just kind of gently wiggle this back and forth. It was a little difficult to get off. There is some area here you could use that won't hurt anything, these two parts. Um, but once you get, it's mainly the gasket holding it. Once you get the gasket to rip apart, um, you can just gently wiggle this and pull it off. Um, and you will obviously need a new one of these gaskets. Um, there's two locator pins. And underneath you've got your little impeller. There's a little M6 nut, um, which is pretty loose. And then the outer piece of this will come off. Um, this was, the lower piece was really difficult to get off. Um, I was able to get it off with a, a couple small screwdrivers, but I was gonna try to save this, but to get it off, it did end up cracking twice. So I'm just, whatever, I'm just gonna buy a new one. But these are like four bucks and it came uh, with a whole new impeller with the kit that I bought. So don't worry about that. If you're gonna pull this whole cover, I mean, as you probably should, you don't really need to worry about getting this off because you can just push the shaft from the outside inward and then this will come off uh, naturally. So I wouldn't even probably worry about doing that. Um, but if it does come off easy, I mean, you can take it off. And then if you do want to try to get the seal out, you can, but like I said, it's got a hardened uh, steel kind of race around it and I wasn't able to to drill it. I didn't try very hard but I just figured it, it made more sense to just pull the cover because I also want to take a peek at the shift star anyway and I'm probably going to inspect the clutch too because it does have about I think it's like approaching 6,000 miles. Um, clutch has been fine but I figured eh, I'll take a peek at it look at it while I'm in there. So from here, I put a little piece of aluminum stock there because this hose was kind of in the way of the cover. So I just spaced it out of the way a little bit. Um, and then you don't need to worry about this guy. That's just like an, that's just for the clutch itself. Um, so I will just take out these outer bolts all along these, this main cover. Um, there's no kickstart, so there's nothing to worry about. I am gonna pull the, the brake lever off because it's kind of in the way. So it's just one bolt right here and then a spring, pull that guy out of the way. Should be, probably have to take this off too so I can get the lever out completely. Um, and obviously drain the oil, which sucks because I just did an oil change, but oh well. Um, drain the oil before you take this off or you're gonna have a heck of a mess. All right, so we'll go back to this guy and we can pull this little, uh, there's a plastic gear, it's interesting. So this little guy should come through and there's your whole shaft. Ah, that sucks, I may have to replace that. 
Maybe, maybe it's just a line on the coating. That's basically the ridge where the, uh, um, it's basically two lines where the ceiling lip is touching the shaft. Uh, but there is some sort of black coating on the shaft, so it could just be that it wore the coating and it's not actually like damaged. I can't really feel it. If you can catch your nail on it, then you definitely want to change it. But I don't really feel it, so I might be okay. And that weep hole points forward, so basically dirt and sand and stuff is thrown from the front of the bike into this hole. So what people do is actually tap in about uh, eighth inch brass tubing in there and you can uh, put a little hose and turn it downward so you basically don't have that open hole that can catch all your dirt and you still have a weep hole that works. So I'm probably gonna do that. Okay, there's the first seal out. I tried pulling it with a pick and it was really difficult and I wasn't able to get it. I could get it to move, but it wouldn't actually pull out and I was afraid to stab my hand. So I used a little piece of aluminum bar stock and used the dowel pin to keep it from moving. Um, and then I was able to pry on it with a screwdriver. Um, definitely don't stick the screwdriver in far enough to be able to touch the outer wall. You don't want to damage any of this because it needs to seal. Um, and you can see one of the seals has little spacer blocks on it. Um, and that'll be the one that's on the inside there. Um, that gives you space so a fluid oil or coolant leaks past one of the seals, it'll get out the weep hole that's right there on the right side. See that? Um, so that's how that would go. Uh, there is online debate about this seal being backwards. People are claiming the, the spring side should face the water pump. I am inclined to agree, but the manual does say to do it this way. And it is, most people I've heard have taken it apart and it is installed this way. Even though generally the spring side will also always face the fluid and face the pressure. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to do it how it was done before, I guess. Because um, it worked. It's, it's sealed this entire time for 10 years that way. So I guess it's fine. Um, but I guess if you want to, you can flip it. I don't really see it being a problem if you flip it either. So... That's up to you. Um, I'm going to see if I can get this one out too with the, the pick. It might move easier or not. I mean, you could technically only replace the one that's that's uh, leaking, but that seems kind of silly with the amount of work. Um, especially if you can't even get the shaft. Uh, if the, you know, I, I doubt you're going to be able to get the seal out without getting that shaft out of the way. It's probably going to be really hard. So you're probably going to have this apart. Might as well do both seals. Okay, so there's the setup. Um, again, I have a dulled pick that I use um, for seals like this. I, I was able to get it like um, I use my palm against the outer cover here and I was able to put this in around the edge of the seal and pull straight up and kind of get the, the wall a little bit loosened. Um, and then I just kind of gently pried with the screwdriver um, and it finally popped it. This rubber is just really stuck. I mean, this has also been in there for, pressed in for 11 years or whatever. So it finally popped out. Um, now it's kind of stuck on the outer one. Um, let me give it a little more prying. And again, just be really careful that you don't jam the screwdriver into the outer wall. Uh, there it goes. All right. Yeah, I think that's the only way to get it because it doesn't look like... I was wondering if you could press the seal all the way through and knock the bearing out too, but it looks like there's a small ridge in the back. So I don't think the seal or the bearing can go either way. I had a feeling there was a shoulder in there. Um, so, yeah, so you do have to pull them out both like that. Uh, note the amount of crud that is in here. I mean... All it takes is one piece of sand to work its way into the sealing lip um, on the shaft and it's going to wear a groove and then damage the seal edge and there you go. That's all it takes. So it's pretty good that this actually lasted 10 years.
So now I'm going to clean out all the dirt I can out of this, make sure it's all clean, and then I'll uh, clean up the outside. I'll use a little grease, a little bit of silicone grease probably on the, the seals, just a tiny bit, and then I'll push in the new ones. They just push in both flush. They should end up flush with the spacers and the right size seal and everything. So put them back in and then uh, reassemble. Okay, I used a nail to clean out the weep hole because it was full of dirt. Um, I poked through a bunch of times and then blasted out with a brake clean and then use a little pipe cleaner. They have little cheesy sets at like Harbor Freight. Um, and I use them for carb cleaning, but also in this case, I just used it to clean out the rest of the dirt and then I blasted it out. Use some, uh, a little brass brush to br brush the inside and get some of the residue off. And then I scotch brite it a little bit by hand, uh, to clean it off. And then again, just break cleaned all the junk, made sure the bearing is still, uh, fine. I checked it for play. It's spinning freely, so I'm not worried about it. Um, so once that's all cleaned out, you can put in new seals. I'm probably going to clean the gasket surface first because that's going to be a little bit of a mess. I got to clean all that off and then I still got to get this gasket off. Although this came off really clean on the engine side. I'm super happy because it's always annoying to try to clean off on the engine. Um, so hopefully this gasket comes off easily on this side, but uh, I kind of doubt it, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, I got all the gasket surfaces cleaned. I scraped all of them with a little um, razor blade, got all that junk off. This light residue, um, I don't typically worry about because you can, you can almost not even feel it at all and you scrape over the top. I mean, if you try to get that off, the angle of the razor blade gets so high that you're gonna start grabbing aluminum and screw it up. So I usually just leave it alone. It's really smooth, it's, I cleaned it, it's, it's gonna be fine. Um, so now I'm going to start putting in a seal. I found a socket that's going to be my driver that's almost the same size. Um, it's just a hair smaller, which is what you want, just a tiny bit smaller. Um, so I'm just going to use this little piece of aluminum and put it over the top and then just tap it with a hammer and push it in that way. I've got the case cover supported on a couple pieces of uh, plywood um, so the dowel pins aren't hitting the table because there's two dowel pins, you could take those out, whatever you want to do. Um, I'm not anticipating it taking a ton of force to get this in. And I'm just going to use a tiny bit of uh, silicone grease. It's important you do use something that's silicone based so it's safe for rubber and doesn't eat it. And silicone isn't really going to hurt anything if it gets in contact with the oil or anything. Um, so place that there and see if I may be able to just push this in. Let's see, have another light. Bingo, there we go. I forgot about that light. Oh, my table's a mess. Should have cleaned this first, but oh well. Here we are. So, yeah, it's going in. Make sure it is the one with the spacers facing up first. It just started going a little crooked. Let's straighten that out. There we go. I'm going to actually put that side down because it's got those little flat thingies. So they can just push all the way. Oop, there it went. I'll give it a little light tap to make sure it's all the way. I think it's a little crooked right now. Yeah, it is. Make sure it's down all the way. Same thing, the manual says uh, both open sides, the spring side of the seals, go inward toward the motor. You can flip this one around if you think it's better to put that side toward the water. It's up to you. I'm just going off what the manual said, so I'm just going to see if I can press this in by hand, which looks like it will. Just using the aluminum block to make sure I don't press too far. And it is all the way in there now. That should be there. Make 
sure that's all the way down. And that should be that. Um, and then that's ready to reassemble. I would do the probably a little bit of grease or oil on the shaft before putting it in there to make sure the, and make sure it's clean before you put it in. It sucked to put the shaft through and then damage the new seals. Um, and then now is the time if you want to pop a little brass tube in the hole there. Um, that's that's up to you. Okay, I just put a little bit of uh, silicone grease in the side of the seals, and I don't, can't really do my tape trick that I would normally do to protect seals, but I just put oil in the shaft, put lube in the seals, push gently through, and it popped through, and hopefully it didn't damage anything. Um, I'm gonna put it back together. I've got the gasket surface all cleaned up. Um, this side wasn't too bad. This gasket wasn't too bad to do. Um, I went around with a microfiber rag and just cleaned cleaned up around here. This actually, the gasket popped off very clean off the motor, thankfully. Um, so all I did was just take some brake clean with a rag, just go the whole way around. Um, I put a dab of oil in there because I wiped it out earlier. I put a little oil on this guy because it's going to pop into a seal in the cover. Um, that should be it. You do have two dowel pins. I think there's one here and here. Make sure those are in there. Um, I may even put those uh, back into the motor and then set the gasket in place. Um, I generally like to put the gasket on the motor because then it's less of a chance of me hooking it on something when I'm trying to put it on the engine again, um, the cover back on, I mean. Okay, cover went on fine, um, pretty easily. I did use my finger on top to hold the gasket in place because those do, those locator pins don't come out of the cover easily, so I just left them in. Gasket wanted to fall inward, so I just put a finger up top to hold it. Um, the gasket doesn't have anything holding it here um, and this bolt is for the water pump. So I don't want to tighten all this first because the gasket right at this hole is not quite aligned. So I'm putting this in temporarily. As you can see, the, um, the gasket wiggles around in there. It's not quite in the right spot. Like without the bolt there, that will probably get squished offset and then the, the bolt won't want to go through and I might damage the gasket there. So I'm kind of putting in a bolt just temporarily to make sure um, the gasket stays in the right spot and then I'm just going to torque the rest of this um, so I can do the cover by itself. Okay, this is me putting it back, but I'm actually, I forgot to mention how I got this out. So if you put it back like this with the spring, I basically hooked the spring in place and then I was able to push, then I was able to pull and flip the lever around and it barely clears and then you can weasel it back into its spot. Um, and then uh, reconnect this back bolt and then reconnect the little pivot. So about now, you're probably wondering, hey, wait a second. What about that brass tube bit that he was going to do to uh, improve the weep hole? I bet you think I forgot. Well, guess what? I did. Thankfully, though, I can still get to the, the weep hole right there. Um, I was able to pin the hole. It is right about a 118 will go in and 119 doesn't quite want to go in. Um, so what I've got here is some little eighth inch brass hobby tube you can get this at a hobby store or like an rc car store or on amazon like i did um it's about 126 and a half od um so it's quite a bit too big i actually put it in a drill chuck like that and then i spun that and then gently sanded it on my belt sander my bench sander um, so I got it down so it's got a little lead at the front. It's going to be a little tricky if you don't have a micrometer, um, but calipers would probably do okay. So I did the end is around, I've got about 18 and then about 19 and about 20. 
So it's gonna lead in and then get a little bit of an interference fit toward the back and just wedge in. And then I've got some Tigon tube that fits on this end. I'm not even gonna worry about trying to flare it to, to hold it on. Um, if you push about that much tube on, it'll stay no problem without a barb. And it's really not even a big deal if all of this falls out because it's not even in there in the first place. And all it's doing is preventing dirt from getting in there. So, um, but it should stay in. I'm probably not even gonna put anything on this. Um, you could get a smaller tube maybe and like epoxy it in or something, but I'm gonna gently push this in there and try not to splinter it um, and mash it to bits. But it should just gently press in there and then I'll put a tube in there and basically run the tube down in this little uh, this little hole here. And all it's gotta do is just exit right below. And that's that's nothing, it's not a big deal. Okay, I did get it in there. I ended up sanding, so basically all the interference area was at 19 because it was a little seemed a little stiff. Um, and I've got about the same amount of, of uh, interference length as is sticking out right now. So it's about half of it. Um, and I was able to barely get that tapped in. Um, I used, if you have a little punch or whatever, I used uh, a bolt about three and a half inches long, four inches long or so. Um, and just the side of the hammer, you can barely get it to just kind of wiggle in here and just barely gently tap that to get it all the way in. If you get the interference right, uh, it will tap in slowly. And I didn't really distort the end of that or ruin it. Okay, there's the hose. I think it's about, it's a little bit, a little over eighth inch hose. Um, you do have to work to get it over that a little bit. Um, I was going to use the next size up, but it was loose. It was like just a little bit too loose, so... But that's all you need. I think that's totally fine. I don't see the point of making this go all the way down, especially because as long as everything's good, uh, nothing's gonna be coming out of that. So I did cut the end of that. I sliced up about maybe three eighths um, just to prevent this end from clogging. Or if you notice dirt, you could just kind of wiggle it and it'll break the dirt out of the end of the hose. Um, you can do that or cut an angle in it, whatever you want to do. Um, but yeah, it should sit there, should sit there fine and not be any problem.